So in addition to hardware, the physical devices that we operate that we call computers, which are easier to understand for the human mind because they are physical and material and we can touch them and we can see them. In addition to those, there's also what we call the software components. Oh, always does that. Software. Hardware and the software. Now, the software is a little bit more difficult to get our mind around it because it seems more abstract. We can't really see it and it's difficult to put a corresponding material element to it. So people in general have a hard time thinking about software. Uh, and it's difficult to understand that the software actually lives or is part of the hardware. The software is different in manifestations and configurations of the hardware. Now, you don't really need to take this idea um, very far at this point in time. And I don't want to make things confusing. But note that the operating system, what we call the operating system, is the major software or layer on top of the hardware that enables the hardware to process the data. So the operating system is the major layer that enables all applications, all specific uh, purposed applications to operate and to run. And there's some major operating systems in the world today. First, let's mention is the Linux-based operating systems. And most, perhaps more, more familiar, most familiar with the Ubuntu, um, with the Ubuntu versions of Linux, especially for uh, personal computers. But there are different versions as well. Linux is probably the oldest of all of these systems and is generally used in uh, big operations. So when you want your system to be reliable and not cause problems, you usually go with Linux. Um, if it, the system needs to process a lot of data and in a more kind of professional, valuable activity, you want to use a system like Linux because the other ones are just not as reliable or therefore sort of a smaller uh, kind of data processing. So another one is, of course, Macintosh operating system. And with all of these, there are different versions of them as well. So there's Mac OS 1, 2, 2.3, and so on. Windows, uh, most people often have uh, are using Windows. Sometimes a PC is called a Windows. It's, it's called a computer that has a Windows operating system. This is kind of a weird term because PC is personal computer. And I think PCs were associated with Mac much before. So... Mac and Windows are both PC, they're both personal computers, except that operating system of Macintosh is one operating system and the Windows is another set of operating system. And Chrome is another one newer player uh, in the operating system world developed by Google and also Android also developed by Google is a huge player in the handheld computers then handheld devices some often called smartphones. I usually just call them handheld computers. And these are five different types of operating systems. And the importance of the operating system is that because they're so foundational for the processing of data, certain applications, well, usually certain every application has to be developed for specific operating systems. So for example, if you're using Windows, and operating system, you cannot install uh, or download and install. You could download, but you cannot install a Macintosh program into your Windows operating system. Now, the company that creates the program or the person that creates the program may create a Windows version and a Macintosh version, but you cannot use the Macintosh version on your Windows. So there are various particularities about each of these systems and of course some advantages and disadvantages with all of them and we'll talk uh, about this some more later in the course 
One major aspect of the operating systems that I want to talk about here, uh, this will be very familiar for a lot of people, but to make sure we establish here the, the, these fundamentals of information technologies, let's recognize that uh, generally in all the operating systems, we are going to be working with the directory structure and file file structure. And files have different types. Directories may or may not have different types, um, but usually directories are kind of just the same. It's a directory, it's a folder, it's a it's um it's a a place where you can put your files. So it's the directory is really more about it's kind of an organizing principle. So they usually don't have type, it's just a container. So folders and the word folder and the word directory are often used uh, similarly. So folder is the same as a directory. And the folder, once again, is where you put the files. So a folder is not a file. Uh, the file are the, the pieces of uh, data that can be either programs or static pieces of data such as text documents or mp3 uh, files of music and so on and as you as you can see written down here with the dot every uh, file has a file type and understanding the file type is very important because different file types can only be processed by certain programs and different file types do different things on the computer so when you see a file such as so file dot exe after the dot is what's called the extension the name the extension of the name of the file and also the file type and exe refers to an executable document so this is usually a program that is going to run on your computer and modify all sorts of data on your computer. Other programs that are not exe, like .dll, or as you may be familiar with, dot, dot .doc. These are specific types of files that are important to know because only certain programs will process them and because they are associated with different kinds of behaviors on the computer. So I ask that everybody actually, when you're setting up your environment, your computer for the taking this course, that you go into your computer and you make you enable showing the file type. Because nowadays the computers are hiding the file types. I'm not really sure why they're doing that, but they are hiding the file types. So you so you can visualize the file types, which I highly recommend you to do. Um, well, do that so we can see the files and the types of files we're working with and we have this a greater knowledge of what's going on on the computer. Notice also we can see here that different files have different uh, size. So some files have a higher size, some files have a lower size. So the lower the number, the lower the size of the file, the higher the number, the higher the size of the file. And the unit to measure file size is bits and bytes as we were exploring this course so k big b is kilobyte k and little b is kilobit and we'll explain the difference between bit and byte and kilo k is for a thousand so a thousand bytes a thousand bits um the more the higher the file size that means it has more data it has more information on it more is more instructions the lower, the lower. And programs or applications. So the programs or applications are the uh, pieces of sets, pieces or sets of activities that the computer uh, does or runs or presents or stores to us. So an application, something like Skype is an application to carry out a particular set of functions which is to uh, make uh, calls, video or text calls to other people, make audio calls, video calls, or send text to other people. Uh, applications such as a mail application will receive emails and send emails and enable certain kinds of those be computer behaviors or activities. Um, we usually 
distinguish applications from uh, files, although an application can be in a single file. But when we talk about application, it's we often mean an installed application that is ready to run the files. And the files are the pieces of data stored uh, in the computer. So when you have a, a text file of your, your documents here, I don't have an image of that, but you may have a, a file for the PDF that I'm going to send for you for this video. So .pdf is the type of file, .pdf, and that means portable document file, portable document format. And that's a specific type of file that has to be processed by an application, by an app or a program or software. These are all names for the same thing. So we'll be talking more about software programs and applications later in the course, but let's just recognize that applications are these sets of functions that the program runs on generally on files, creating or deleting or editing them. And the applications need to run on specific operating systems. So pop quiz, how many programs are shown on the image below? Pause the video here and think about this. So here I'm going to give the answer. Uh, it might be a little bit hard to tell because they have changed the look of one of these programs over time to make it very kind of hidden and elusive and almost like you don't even see it. And that is the browser itself. So this is a browser I have here. Now I don't remember which browser. It might be Chrome or Firefox, but this whole window here is a browser. You see where we put the address, the web address, and then there's the refresh button, the go back button, and there's the tab. This is a web browser. The web browser is one program, at least. Now we have here DuckDuckGo, which is a web search engine. So it's supposedly a more privacy-oriented search engine, unlike a Google, and also it ranks the order of your results differently because people, don't know this, but Google is very biased in a way. Maybe has good information, but Google is very biased, dominant player in the world, a web search engine. Uh, and we'll kind of examine more of these issues of Google, but there are others as well. DuckDuckGo is one web search engine that works very well. So that's another program that you're accessing through the browser. So there's at least two programs. DuckDuckGo is one program. The web browser is another program. And you can also think about things like extensions or add-ons to the browser, particular functions of the program that are sold and packaged separately. And you can think of those as particular programs. So this is kind of a tricky question because it depends how you define program. Um, so it gets a little bit tricky, but I wanted to highlight these differences and how we think about software programs uh, and the functions that they perform. So next we'll talk about uh, data.